embarking on a weight loss journey, I feel like everybody only speaks about how good you're going to feel once you hit goal. Once you hit that goal weight, once you're on this journey, how amazing you're going to feel. I feel like nobody ever talks about the fact of the mental struggle. How do you feel when, even though the scale says you've lost weight, you still think in your head, in your mind's eye, that you're still fat? you still feel fat, where your body and your mind are not connecting and the body dysmorphia kicks in. And today I want to talk about it because I know I'm not alone and I want you to know that you're not alone. So let's jump into it. Hi friends, welcome back. My name is Danielle and this is Daniela Diaries. Welcome back to Vlogmas. And today I want to talk all about body dysmorphia. Now I know we hear it all the time, body dysmorphia, people having trouble adjusting to their newfound shape or their way they see themselves isn't exactly how others see themselves, see them. It's this whole thing, right? And I've always heard about it and I never really thought much of it until I started to experience it for myself. So if you guys are new here, I've been on a, look girl, I've been on weight loss during my whole life, okay, for real. But in this last year, I've really taken it seriously and I've really transformed my body. I've lost about 30 pounds in this last year in 2022 and I feel amazing. I'm still not exactly where I wanna be, but I'm damn close. And I feel like even though I see the number on the scale, I know that my clothes are bigger. I know that I look different. I still sometimes will look at myself and say, man, I still look bad. And I recently have been struggling with this more because even though I see the scales dropping and I'm probably at the lowest weight I've been in quite so many years, I still sometimes, especially when I see myself on camera, or in a picture, I still feel like, damn, I, I, I still feel like I look pretty damn fat. Like, I still feel like sometimes when I see myself that I look exactly like I did. And even when shopping, I struggle. And I feel like nobody talks about this. This is probably the, the opposite side that no one talks about, maybe because it's not to sway people from doing this journey or something along those lines. But I feel like it's something really real that we need to discuss. Because even though I am a size, I don't know, I'm anywhere from like an eight to a 10, I still refuse to shop at certain stores because I feel like I won't fit them. Because for years and years and years, I didn't fit them. So I don't even bother, you know? Or even when I shop online, I always go for the biggest size. And then I get items and then they're too big for me. And then I struggle with figuring out what size am I really? And I was actually watching, I think it's Erica Fit Love. Um, she was on The Biggest Loser and she talked about it. And I was like, oh my gosh, I'm not alone. And I want to tell you guys that this is honestly such a hard part about it. The fact is, is yes, our bodies look different. Yes, we are losing the weight. Yes, we are smaller, but we hold on to the clothes from before. We still buy the bigger sizes. We still don't accept the fact that yes, we are smaller. Yes, we are skinnier. I hate saying skinny. I always say like leaner. Um, and it's, it's a complete mind screw, you know, where I'm constantly struggling with what the world sees and what I see. And now I am in therapy, you know, weight loss is, it comes with a lot of things, but, and it's not something easy. Self-love and learning to accept this new body, this new life, this new person that we've now created, because we've created a new person. I can tell you who I was six months ago isn't who I am today. My relationship with myself, with my food, with my body is different. And it's so hard to unlearn the self-loathing. Um, it's just so hard. And I have been struggling so hard with trying to figure out my style. Now I know this is completely first world problems, okay? And, but I feel like this is something that we need to discuss because yes, as mediocre and mundane as it sounds, and it may be vain to some people, and someone might be like, oh my God, you're so lucky because you can't, it, it's, it shouldn't take away from the fact that just because your struggle may not as be with somebody else's struggle is it's still a struggle. And I want to give that a voice. 
So body dysmorphia, right, is basically by definition, let's look it up here. Body dysmorphia is a mental illness involving obsessive focus on perceived flaws in appearance. The flaw may be minor or imagined, but the person may spend hours a day trying to fix it. The person may be trying try many cosmetic procedures or exercise, exercise to access. There is body dysmorphia and body dysmorphia by proxy. So there's, these are, and it's a form of anxiety. These are all, it's literally recognized as a mental illness. And I know that a lot of people will not see it as such, but it is. It is because it affects us mentally. It is something that is altering our perception of ourselves. It's altering how we deal with our day in and day out portions of life. And it's very real. Now, I know that it may come from extremes to, you know, some people may be more extreme as others, but it still is a present thing and it needs to be spoke of. And how am I combating it? So recently, I've had to push myself out of my comfort zone. I've gone into stores that I've never shopped at before and looked around and I bought the size that I or tried on and I hate trying on clothes or I hate it. But I, I am pushing myself to the limits because I have to see the proof in the pudding. For example, I went to Zara. Now I know Zara is a, a whole other, I know their sizing weird, but I went and I bought myself a size large of their a pair of pants. And I was like, I'm gonna try them. And I told Leo, I'm like, look, these aren't gonna fit me. He's like, get them in the large. The extra large is gonna be too big. They're way too stretchy. I was like, no, I need an extra large. He's like, Danielle, get the large. <sighs> they fit and I could not believe it okay last year i did a video comparing good american to Abercrombie, and i got all my jeans in a size 12. i recently went to go put those jeans on and they are huge on me i'm probably like a size eight in those jeans now and these things that i see where i'm like i cannot i can't believe it i can't i can't understand i cannot put these numbers in together and how am i how else can you combat it so someone suggested buying a smaller size and just trying it on. So I've done mediums and shirts. I've, I went from, you know, ordering an extra large to a medium. And I really recommend going into store and trying on these clothes. Now, I'm going to tell you, if you're going to go into store and try on these clothes, don't bring your kids, don't bring your husband. Wear comfortable clothes because you're going to be in the changing room. It's going to be hot. Don't trust in layers. And really give your time, give yourself a little afternoon, an hour or two out of your day to really focus on what size are you. Don't shop online. You cannot shop online when going through this whole transition because it, it's not going to make you feel any better. You're either going to buy too small or too large. So if you're going to go in the store, say you were a size 12, get your size 12 and then order and then grab pants to size smaller. So get a 10 and an 8. Try them on. Now don't let yourself be deteriorated by numbers as well. So for example, I can do a size like eight or a six in Old Navy. Now I went to Express and the 12 was kind of snug. It depends on this, the rise, the cut, all these things. So all of those things we have to take in consideration. Now for me, that was always a struggle because I always felt like all the jeans were cut and made the same and you know, it's just a standard. But for some reason, especially with women, I don't know if it's just my age, but your size of jeans was always such a triggering moment for me. When I had to get a pair of size jeans at a size 18 two years ago, I was like, what the hell? And I remember telling my mom I was crying and she's like, Danielle, not all jeans are made the same. Those might be actually a size 12, they might be cut different. But I didn't hear that. I just saw the size 18 and it was devastating to me. So don't give the size that much attention, right? But also I want you guys to understand that if you are struggling with body dysmorphia and this is something that is altering your day in and day out, you know, relationship with yourself, therapy. Now you guys know I'm always telling y'all to go to therapy. Therapy is like my cure for everything, you know? Some people it's like turmeric, for me it's therapy. But it really does help. It helps me understand that my weight wasn't a punishment. I didn't punish myself by becoming overweight. I didn't not love myself. I didn't abuse myself. I didn't hate myself. It's just things that happen. Sometimes things happen. Sometimes things get out of hand. Sometimes things get carried away. And I have every power and control in my own hands to go ahead and take back my life. And that's what I chose to do. And it's a struggle. It's a struggle day in and day out 
to figure out my sizing, to figure out that the first thing that you guys are not looking at is my loose skin in my stomach. For me, that is the biggest struggle for me, is this loose skin that I'm left with. You know, it's a struggle with me in my intimate relationship. It's a struggle for me when I come online and show you my belly. But I try to push myself to show it as much as I can because if I force you guys to see it and I force people to acknowledge it and I force myself to acknowledge it, then maybe I won't feel like I have to hide it. Because loose skin is not something I can control. Having this, this apron of skin left is just that. It's, it's skin, Danielle. It's, it's skin. And it's here. It's, it's here. And I have to love that part of me in order to love all of me. There's going to be no size 8 jeans or a size small shirt that is going to take away the dysmorphia. The sizing is just maybe little little bits and pieces that I could help alleviate the, the burden in our brains, you know, maybe help us celebrate our sizing and getting out of our own head. That's the only reason I, I brought up sizing. But in actuality, it's looking in this mirror and seeing myself for all my flaws and saying, it's okay because we've come a hell of a long way and we've got so much further to go. And because it's like a trophy, right? It's, it's a reminder of where I was. It's a reminder of what I've been through. It's a reminder that I went somewhere that I was not happy with and I pulled myself out of the slump and I took the time, I made hard choices, I did hard things, and I did it all on my own. And I should be proud. I should be proud and I shouldn't let this skin, this belly, take away from my accomplishments. I shouldn't let that because I worked hard and I loved myself enough to know that healthier options are better, to know that you have to get up, even on the days when you're feeling a little lazy and make it to the gym. And not everybody does that. Some people choose not to. Some people choose to stay the same. And I should celebrate my victories and stop being so damn hard on myself because I'm 39 years old. I'm in the better shape at 39 than I was at 29. Shh, I'm gonna be honest with you, I'm better at night than I was at 19. I may have been skinnier, but it wasn't healthier, I'll tell you that much. And this, this whole thing, I'm honestly just talking to myself right now and you guys are just part of this epiphany, but we could be so much freaking worse. I could still just be adding more weight onto where I was and still just be miserable and unhealthy and eating myself into an early grave. But instead, I chose to love myself first from the inside out. And sometimes love isn't picture perfect. Sometimes I'm not picture perfect and you won't be picture perfect. But in every picture, there's some beauty that the painter sees that not everybody else does, right? Yeah, yeah. Not everybody else will see the beauty that is in this painting. It doesn't make it less beautiful. It doesn't make it less beautiful. It makes it completely unique, a complete Picasso that I've created. I've created a reality for myself and I have a little bit of a reminder of where I've been. Now, can I choose to have that reminder removed? Absolutely. One day I will. I'm just taking my time. Surgery scares me. I've had three abdominal surgeries, I've three C-sections, a lot of scar tissue to go through and I have small kids and I don't know, I'm just, I'm just not there yet. I think 
plastic surgery, I know plastic surgery takes a mental toll on people. And when I'm ready, I'm going to be ready. And I'm going to do it for all the right reasons, not just because I want to look cute naked. I want to do it because I'm finally ready to take it, to take that step. Because I feel like I'm ready, not because I think that I'll look better on camera or look better for my husband, but because I'm ready. And my husband doesn't mind it. My kids don't mind it. And I honestly don't think a lot of you guys mind it as much as I do. And... I'm just going to keep going. I'm going to keep getting healthier. I'm going to keep loving myself harder. And when I'm feeling the most chunky, soft, pancita around, I'm going to have to rewatch this video because I'm a Picasso that I've created. I'm a Van Gogh. So if you feel how I feel on some days, watch this video. And remember who the hell you are and how far we have come and how much further we're going to go. Skin's might going to get looser. You might feel bigger on some days. But eventually we're going to catch up. And maybe we won't. But we're never going to be as bad as we once were. Each day we're going to get better. Each day I'm going to force myself to try on the smaller sizes, to look at myself and force myself to see the beauty that is within me. Because how can I expect anybody else to see it when I can't? Maybe it's today, maybe it's tomorrow, maybe it's in a month where you're feeling down, when you're feeling like you look exactly the same, even though you know you're smaller or your body has changed, whether you're postpartum or a new mom or newly pregnant, you know, and maybe you were just some svelte, babelicious, tiny little thing, and you gain a little bit of weight after having your babies, and you feel disconnected and out of touch with your body. You're not alone. We all have been there. We're all there at one point or another. But remember, you're an absolute Picasso, a Van Gogh, and you created the perfect canvas. You're absolutely beautiful, and I see you for your true beauty, even on the days when you don't see it. And know that your mind can be such a cruel person. Doesn't make it right. It's just sometimes it's just a little asshole. But you're beautiful and absolutely perfect the way you are. I'm beautiful and perfect the way I am. Perfectly imperfect.